Hey guys, so let's solve a few more momentum impulse questions. Let's check this first one out. Uh, we have a 1200 kilogram car that collides with 20 meters per second against the wall. And then it stops after one meter of the car being compressed against the wall. Sort of the, fr the front part of the car gets all squished up, right? So let's draw this real quick. 1200 kilogram car, let's put some wheels, um, is moving with 20 meters per second when it hits a wall. Now the car stops in a distance of one meter. So from here to here is one meter. That's a delta x of one meter or d. Um, the initial velocity over here is 20. And the final velocity here is zero. So the first question is, assuming a uniform deceleration so the, uh, the deceleration is at the same pace, at the same rate. How long does the collision last? So we want to know what is the delta t here. So since we're talking about momentum and impulse, um, you might think immediately of this equation, and that's a good thing, but I'm going to show that that equation is actually not going to work. Another reason why you might think of this equation is because of collisions. So even though, um, even outside of discussing this topic specifically, um, like if you have a test that's mixing this chapter with a bunch of other chapters, um, how would you think of impulse? You would think of impulse and momentum because there's a collision going on, right? So as long as whenever you see a collision, you should thinking should be thinking of momentum and impulse. Um, but this equation is not going to work because once you write it out, let me put here that part A. We're looking for delta t. Once you write it out, J F delta t. Um, delta P, M, V final, V initial, you realize that you don't have J, you're looking for T, you don't have F, you don't have delta P, and you have these three guys here. But that's not enough to solve because if you try to set this up like this, F delta T, this is what I'm looking for, equal to the right side, which is everything I have, you will notice that I'm missing F here. And without f, I can't solve this. So this is not solvable using this equation. The only other recourse you have is to use motion equations. And you will be able to use motion equations because it says here uniform deceleration. Those three or four equations of motion can only be used if you have uniform acceleration or deceleration. Okay? So we're going to use motion equations to find time. I'm going to list my five variables here. V initial, which is a 20. V final, which is a 0. Acceleration, I don't know. Delta T is what we're looking for. And delta X is 1. Hopefully you remember this stuff. If you don't, you can go back and review. Uh, the acceleration is my unknown variable, or my ignored variable, rather. Um, if you look through the four equations of motion, the equation that you're supposed to use when you don't care about the acceleration is what I call the fourth equation. Uh, which most professors will be fine with you using. Some professors don't give you that equation, and some professors don't even want you to use that equation. Uh, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, in case you know that your professor doesn't want you to use this equation and only wants you to use the other three, you're going to have to use two out of the three equations. You're first going to have to find A. So if you can't use equation four, which I'll write in a second, you're going to have to first find a, then t. So you're going to have to use two equations instead. Just in case that shows up, I want to remind you of this stuff because it's, it's probably been a while since you've done this. So equation number four says that delta x is v initial plus v final over 2 times delta t. Hopefully you can use this and it would be easier. All right, so let's move some stuff around. Delta X is one, V initial is 20, V final is zero, and this is two. So that's your delta T. So this becomes a 10. So your delta T is one over 10 or 0.1. So your collision is 0.1 seconds. Um, that's it for that first part. For part B, it says use momentum impulse, meaning this equation up here, to find the average force exerted on the car. The reason why this question is saying specifically use momentum and an impulse is because there are other ways you could have done this. If you wanted to find the average force in the car, you could have done F equals MA. And then once you calculate the acceleration right here, 
then you'd be able to plug in the mass and you would know the answer. But we don't want to do it that way. We want to do it using momentum and impulse. But I do want to point out the fact that sometimes there's multiple ways of doing these things, right? So um, find the average force. J equals F delta T delta P M V final V initial. I want the force. I know the time and I know these three things. Um, I don't know J. I don't know delta P. So the best way to do it is to just set this side equal to this side. F delta T equals m v final minus v initial. v final is zero, so this really just becomes m v initial uh, with a negative there, right? So delta t is um, negative m v i, I'm sorry, f, sorry, f, delta t, f is what we're solving for, delta t goes under, um, looks like that. So if you plug in these numbers, I have it here, um, if you plug in these numbers, you get a really big number, actually. So 1,200, initial velocity 20. This is 0.1. So the answer is negative 240, 240,000 newtons. Okay? It's negative because it's a stopping force. The, the force is to the left. And the reason why you have such a big number is because you're stopping a heavy car that's moving really fast in just a meter. Think about a collision, how much that hurts. Um, that's why you get a big F there. So that should make sense. Cool? That's the final answer. I got a practice problem here. Let's give that a shot.